All right. Let's see who comes at this time. I'm experimenting with some different times of the day to see what people prefer. So the last few times I've done it in the morning at around 10 o'clock here. And today I'm trying it in the afternoon. Right now it's uh, 3 o'clock. Hey there. Omni, you're the first person. Congratulations. <laughs> Ashley, hey. Janet. I hope that this uh, isn't going to f***. Sometimes when I stream on YouTube with my phone, um, sometimes the app crashes frequently, like very frequently. So we'll see how it goes today. <laughs> if it crashes a lot, I'll have to... If it crashes, just wait. It'll come back. But if it crashes often, I'm going to have to restart my phone and try again. But I think it's the app. I don't think it's my phone. Yeah, a few people here. Hey there. Let's see. Well, my new, sorry, a bunch of people saying hi. I'm trying to reply. Actually, Asia Beijing, 안녕하세요. 좋은 아침입니다, Billy. Hey, 3.55 a.m.? Wow, that's early. Hi from Turkey, cool. Oh, my hat. This is, uh, I wear this in some of my videos. This is 착한 남자. You can see. 착한 남자, which is like a, it's a funny way to spell 착, 착하다, to be nice or friendly. So, chakkan, it's like, just, it's a wrong way to spell it, but it's kind of funny. Oh, hey, the one and only. Hi from Syria. Oh, awesome. Philippine. Not Philippine. Philippine sounds cute. Philippine Saramia. Okay. Nice guy vibe. Yeah, it's just, it's just a joke. I thought it was funny, though, so. Do you miss your parents? No, my parents live like, well, my mom lives like 10 minutes down the road, I guess. And my dad lives uh, about an hour or so away. Love you so much. Thank you for helping me learn Korean. You're welcome. Yes. So today I'm going to do a short stream for one hour. So I'm going to stream from now until I'd say eh, about, about a little before 4.30 in this time. So we're not, now at an hour. Um, and I'll talk about a few things today. I want to show you guys what I'm currently working on and I want to get your feedback on a few things and I'm also open if you have some questions. The writing looks backward. Really? Uh-huh. Interesting. That's probably just the way that... That's weird. Why does it look backward? Let me, let me check if there's an option for that. Hmm. Okay. That changes the camera. That's not what we want. Oh, it has some filters. Cool. Whoa, it's got different filters. Whoa. Okay, I'll just do normal. You can just see my real face. Okay. Self-studying Korean three months. Oh, awesome. Yeah, three months. That's, that's still pretty new, but that's, that's good. How do you pronounce the name? Sasha Banks? Probably Sasha Banks. Something like that. Right. I'm not sure why it looks backwards, though. I don't see an option for flipping the image. Uh, there might be. I just don't see it. Plan on moving a soul. Culture shocks. Oh, I made a video about culture shock actually just a few days ago. <laughs> I uploaded it with a uh, YouTuber, Abby P. And uh, oh, this isn't a webcam. I'm just streaming from the YouTube app on my phone. So I'm not sure if there's any uh, way to fix that. I think though I want, like I don't get because like right now I'm filming against the window just because it's got good lighting. But filming against the window, the problem is that like half of my face is really bright and the other half of my face is dark, like two face. So I'm thinking of, I want to like fix that. Let me see if I can fix that. So this is the normal lighting in my room. This is my closet where I store all my video making equipment. I have everything that I've used since I first started my channel. There's, so there's lots of stuff I don't use anymore. And some new stuff. I've got KeyCat up there. Actually, that's the stunt double. That's not the original one. And like laptop for traveling. I've got a Korean drum. I've got my Korean flag right here. I'm still not sure if I want to put it somewhere else. But right now it's here. Started from the bottom. Yeah, I'm still on the bottom though, you know. I'm still not that I'm still not that big, but I have more people that watch my channel now, so I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy I got people to watch my channel because I, I'm, like, I seriously didn't want to go back to working at 
Baskin Robbins, like what I was doing before I started my channel and my other jobs. Let's see. Okay, I got, I got this reflector, so I'm gonna try to see if I put it, if I put it like right up here, maybe I can make it so it makes my face brighter. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So let's do this. I got a little clip. Let's put this on a little clip here. Oh yeah, okay. That looks a little weird that it's like right there in my face, but see now it's like my face is bright too. Okay. It's because it's like too, it was too, too dark. It was too dark. Sorry, if I, if, if I missed something you said, feel free to write it again. I was looking in my closet and I didn't get to read what everyone was saying. <laughs> Futures now with this high tech. Yes, this $5 or $10 uh, reflector from Amazon. <laughs> Do a video how to write your name in Korean. Picking a Korean name. I was thinking about that, but if I do something like how to pick your name in Korean, I would want to make sure that it's not, that I would want to make sure it's an actual Korean name um, and that it's educational. Because I've seen some other people who have lessons about how to write a name in Korean, and it's either one of two things. It's first thing would be pick this random Korean name and just say it's your Korean name. And I don't want to do that because that's not real. And the other one would be, uh, just some common names written in Korean, which isn't useful either. So I want to do kind of a combination. I want to have a video that actually teaches you how to convert your name into Korean, whether you pick a real Korean name or your name said with Korean pronunciation. So I'm working on that, but I'm kind of thinking about it and it won't be for a while. First, I'm going to edit the videos that I filmed while I was in Korea. And after I finish these videos, I have about 24 that I shot in Korea this, this summer for three months. Once I finish those, which will be around, let's say about October, then I can start working on new ones. Are you going to KCON? I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll find out in a week. Maybe, maybe not. If I am, I'll let you guys know. Do you have a Korean name? Just PDD. I just, I just go by PDD in Korean as well. Will you do Japanese guide? Um, no, my Japanese is not as high level as my Korean. I'd say my Japanese speaking is like low intermediate. My Japanese understanding is maybe low advanced. I can understand a lot, but I've never tried teaching Japanese before. I wouldn't really feel confident in that. So I don't want to do something I wouldn't be very good at, I guess. I want to make sure you guys get good content because people I know would move over from my Korean, they would learn Japanese with me, but I think they could get better Japanese lessons from other people currently. <laughs> see, it's 1232 in Egypt. Oh, Egypt. I want to go to Egypt someday. Really, I just like see the pyramids. I know that it's next to like a KFC and it's just like right in the city, but I don't care. I still want to go to see the pyramids. <laughs> when is your workbook? Yes, I'm going to be... Yeah, that's what I wanted to update you guys on. So. Let me move out of here. <laughs> so right now I'm working on a few things. The one that I'm working on first is a workbook for Korean Made Simple 1. Now, it's a big workbook. So I have been working on this for, I would say, over a year, really easily. It's, I've been working on this workbook longer than I spent to write any of the three full books, just because it takes a lot of time to make example sentences and example practice questions. And the level is going to be for the first book, just for Korean Made Simple 1. And the reason, I'm not sure if I'll make workbooks for Korean Made Simple 2 and 3 yet. We'll have, we'll have to see. But the first workbook, I really wanted to make it because I feel like when you're first starting Korean, you really, really need a lot of exposure, a lot of practice. And you need to see the same words used many ways so that they can like click so that you can get them. So, let's see, I'm working on workbook. I have my workbook draft. Every chapter, I'm doing like one chapter a day, which takes several hours, two to three hours per, per chapter in the workbook. And so I'm doing about one a day right now again. And this is my third draft. So I, would, I did this before as well. I did one chapter a day and then I did it again. I went, went over the chapter again, added more stuff, cleaned it up, and now it's the third time. And then I'm going to do it one more time after this, which is the final draft. And then I'll do it one more time and I'll put it into a, I'll format the book. So it's gonna be a few more months. My goal is to finish this book completely and get it out by November. So we'll see. 
So I want to have it ready by November if, if, we, if I can do that. But yeah, it's got, um, I'll kind of show you a little bit of it. It's got just like I have the chapter outline, so it's going to have practice for everything, including the hunger sections for the book, then all 20 chapters. And I'm estimating, like currently just the questions with no drawings and no space to write them, just my original text file is many of those. Yes, yes, this will have many different variations. It's not just the practice section in the book longer. It's not that. I didn't want that. Uh, every practice section, every workbook chapter is going to have additional translation practice, just like the book. It's going to have some additional basic questions like match this one with this one. But it's also going to have some more fun stuff like audio practice. So listen to this and write down what you hear and translate it. Uh, matching drawings, you know, like fill in the blank or choose which of the, which of the particles should go in here and stuff like that. So a little bit more stuff to do that's outside of what the book offers. Um, but yeah, right now it's got about 90 pages of just text, which means when I put this into a book, it's going to easily be like over 200 pages. So it's going to be a giant workbook, but I'm going to try to keep it cheap. So I don't want to make it giant and expensive. I want to make it giant and affordable. And I'll let you know when it's out. It's not out yet. I'm just working on it. And I want to let you guys know that I am working on it. And that's the next thing I'm doing. I'm also working on another book, but I'm not sure how much I should share about that yet. But I'm working on another book as well, um, with, together with uh, Talk to Me in Korean. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. That, that's different. That's not this. And I'm not sure when that'll come out. But um, yeah, it would be great if you could visit Egypt. Yeah, it'd be cool. I like, I haven't traveled very much. I've been to Korea and Japan a few times and Korea a lot. I've been to Hong Kong once. I went to Alaska once, Hawaii several times, um, the East New York a couple times. But I've never been to like other countries besides, I've never been to Europe. I've never been to uh, India or anywhere in the Middle East. Would you recommend sticking to one book series for learning? Uh, multiple, I think is good. If you focus on one series, but adding in extra series is good. You want to have different insight from different teachers. Yes, my hat says, Chakan Namja. Don't come to the UK. I heard, I heard, I heard about the weather. Um, I don't mind though, I don't mind traveling to a place with bad weather. But it's hard to do work. It's hard to film and to get outside when it's bad weather. But I wouldn't mind it for a short time if I traveled somewhere with bad weather. How fast can you read Korean characters? Uh, I can read Korean characters very fast, I think. Um, not as fast as a native Korean, of course, but as fast as possible, I guess. <laughs> not as fast as natives, but a little lower than that. So fairly fast. How to organize a Korean study book? Ah, that's a good question. How to organize a Korean study notebook. I've gotten that question before by email and I can't, yeah. Um, Billy, where is KiCat? Everyone, sorry about the notebook question. Um, basically, you know, let me make a video about that. That's a good topic. How to organize a Korean, let me write that down. How to organize your Korean study notebook. Let's put this here. Let's see, okay. What happened to the pledges on Patreon higher than 25? Uh, nobody made them. <laughs> okay, I'll do a video on that. I'm going to be doing a new series that is going to be short Korean questions, like Korean questions that can be answered in just like, you know, a couple minutes. Um, and I'm thinking about how to present those videos. So I'm thinking about, because I have a lot of topics that I want to make that are like that, really short, like how to organize a Korean study notebook. I could probably explain it in two to three minutes. So I don't want to make a full giant six minute video with KiCad and animations and everything just to do something that I could do in two minutes because it's, a, it's kind of just stretching it out. It's not necessary. I like to do videos that are only as long as they need to be. So I was thinking of doing a new series with lots of Korean questions I have that I'd like to answer, like how to organize your notebook or um, should you learn Korean at the same time as another language? Really quick questions. And I'm thinking about getting a whiteboard 
and talking in front of a whiteboard and writing in front of a whiteboard. I'm just not sure. Or on like a glass board, writing in front, like on in front of it on a glass board, you know, like that with me with my face talking. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? What do you guys think would be a good idea to make like a short series? Because I want to make a short series that I can film very quickly, edit very quickly, and upload twice a week. Because I've only done one upload per week since I started over five years ago, five and a half years ago. I've only done one video a week. I would like to do two videos a week. So one regular video uh, continually, and then one extra short video of these types of short questions. So that's what I'd like to do. What's easier or harder, reading, writing, or speaking Korean? I think it depends by what level, like what style of writing and reading and speaking. Because in, you know, in general, it's harder to speak it. It takes more, you have to think more quickly. But you kind of like talk to me in Korean's Q&A style. Uh, not copying theirs, but they do, they do a longer form. I'm thinking of shorter form. Um, I think speaking would be typically harder, but sometimes if you're, if you're trying to write an essay, that could be hard if you've never done practice, as well as reading a novel could be very difficult as well. Is North Korean different from South Korean? Yes, I have a video about that on my channel. Are my books in Barnes & Noble? Some Barnes & Noble have them, but it's not worldwide in Barnes & Noble. So if you want to get it at Barnes & Noble, you have to go to Barnes & Noble and ask them, can you order this book here? And they'll do it. They'll order the book to the, to the store if you ask them. But it's not worldwide in Barnes & Noble. I'm still waiting for that false friends video. I remember that. I put, <laughs> I, I put that in the video suggestions a long time ago. I think it might still be in the video suggestions. But I never made a video about it because I couldn't think of enough stuff to talk about. I thought of only like you know, a dozen or so examples. So that could be something that I would make in this short series would be False Friends or Vowel Harmony is another one that I've wanted to do. Sells books for a living. Billy's books are easily available. Yes, they are easily available. It's a good street marketplace in South Korea. Uh, that depends what you want to buy. Everything, it, it would completely depend on what you want to buy. Insadong is typical tourist place for Korean style souvenirs. So I'd maybe recommend there, Insadong, in the main part of Seoul. Yeah, any bookstore can order them. There is, some, there is a catalog of every book, and bookstores have access to order books from this catalog. And they can buy them for a lower price than the full price so that they can sell them. That, that the way they can make a profit. And my book is one of the books that's in there, just like everyone's book is in that catalog. So any bookstore can order my book, even if they don't normally have that. But they might or might not. It depends on who's working there, if they would do that. Yeah, it's kind of like it has an ISBN. That's correct. Every book that has an ISBN can be ordered, as well as libraries can get my book too. Do you consider yourself a Korean? No, I'm not a Korean. I'm an American who speaks Korean. <laughs> what is the favorite Korean food? And someone asked, what is the worst food you ever ate in Korea? Uh, my favorite Korean food is sundae, which is the like blood sausage. I love that. It's the purple one. It looks like a tube of blood, but it's really good. I love that. And uh, my worst food is probably hongo, hongo, which is um, fermented, basically smells rotten, skate fish, which is like stingray. So basically like rotten stingray. <laughs> it tastes like Windex and the texture is like chewing cartilage, like chewing someone's ear. It's just gross. Like, uh, but I can eat it. I just did not enjoy it. I got a library card to try mango languages. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Sunday joya, yeah. Have you tried kimbap? Of course. A rotten bottom feeder, yeah. <laughs> Someone asked, are you British? No, I'm not British. I can't, I can't even do a British accent. <laughs> this is my stereotypical American trying to do a British accent accent. It tastes like Windex. No, it tastes like what Windex smells like. You know, it's ammonia. It has ammonia on it. And I can't verify this, but I've heard that the stingray, the skate fish, has no bladder. Like, you know, bladder for um, getting rid of urine and stuff like that. I've heard that. So instead, the stingray urinates by pushing through its skin. I'm not sure how true that is. I read it on one source, two sources I read it on, but I can't find an original science paper talking about it. So maybe it's true, maybe it's not. 
But anyway, it definitely, I would believe it because it definitely smells like ammonia and tastes like ammonia. So it's very off-putting. But with that said, I still could eat it. I still could eat it. So I'm not against trying smelly foods. Uh, let's see, what exactly is kimchi? Kimchi is cabbage that's been fermented. And there's many kind, there are many kinds of kimchi. So you ate peanut. <laughs> I don't believe so. I, I just think it, it had ammonia smell. So it definitely has ammonia in it. And they wash that, but it's still there. It still really strongly tastes like ammonia. Do you have a favorite Korean celebrity? Uh, I don't know too much about Korean media. I do, I do have some Korean celebrities who I like, but I don't think I would say I have a favorite one. At least I don't really want to talk about Korean girls on this live stream here. <laughs> So many fermented foods. Yes, lots of Korean food is fermented. I think it's really good. What did you use to practice listening to Japanese? I watched tons of Japanese drama. I, wouldn't, I didn't watch anime very much, and I would just watch lots of drama. And I had lots of uh, Japanese friends at the time. In fact, one of my Japanese friends I met back in 2003, 2004, yeah, 2004, um, when I first was finishing high school, I went uh, to college and I met a Japanese friend and she's actually going to be coming and she'll be staying here at my place for a few days and hanging out here with me and my wife and my kid and we're going to go play and do all sorts of stuff. So it'll be really cool. Let's see if we could donate. Oh, Jeremiah Hernandez. Hey, thanks for the donation, man. We could donate new stuff like from Amazon for your videos or to help you record, could we? Um, I have a like I have a wish, I have stuff that I want to buy that I don't that I'm waiting. Like I I think of, oh, I want to buy this, but I shouldn't just throw my money away. I shouldn't just buy this unless I know that I need it. So I'll put stuff into a wish list and I'll leave it there for a few months and I'll think about it. Like, do I really need this? Is this something that I could use in my video? So this was one of them. You know, everything I have here, I thought about buying it before I bought it for a long time because I don't want to, I mean, if I spend this money, like this would be the cost of two people buying my book. So I don't want to just buy it for no reason unless I need it. But I have used this a lot. I like this. Or my lights. My lights would cost, you know, one light set might be over a hundred bucks or something. So I don't want to buy it unless I really need it because I think about, you know, this took, a lot of people are studying Korean. A lot of people have bought my book to give me this money. And if I'm spending it all on equipment, I want to make sure I can use that equipment to make better videos. So yeah, I do have some stuff that I want to get that I really want to buy for to help make better videos. But I can't think of how, and if you want to like buy me equipment, that's cool. But um, I wouldn't, if you want to donate money to Go Billy, I have a donation page on my website, but I'm not going, I would never ask people for donations of money. I would much rather just to see happy people learning the language and sharing the language with each other. And do I make a lot of money on YouTube? <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. No. <laughs> I wish. Um, I know YouTubers don't typically say how much money they make. YouTubers will hide it. And I kind of understand why, because it's kind of personal. They don't want you to think, they don't want viewers to think like, Oh, he's getting rich off me. Oh, I hate him. I'm jealous. But I, so I kind of, if YouTube crashes, just wait. <laughs> oh, hey, Yong Yong. Um, so I kind of understand why it wouldn't. But no, for me, I'm okay sharing how much money I make off of YouTube. I make, it, it varies every month, but it's about $300 a month right now. So during my better months, if I upload a popular video, it'll go to like $400 for that month. Uh, if it's a really slow month, it'll be $200. So it's about $300 a month from YouTube. Wow. And I easily spend that much money per month on upgrading equipment or <laughs> paying for things to do videos. For example, if I do a mukbang video or if I do any video where I meet someone, and I say, hey, do you want to make a video with me? Who pays for that food? Who pays for their drinks? Who pays for the rentals for whatever we're doing? Like I did a video with uh, Minji, if you just saw the one I uploaded. 
on、uh, wearing hanbok. So I paid for the hanbok. I rented the hanbok because, of course, because I invited her to be in my video. It would be mean to say, "Hey, you pay." Like it's just normal. So if I go have a video where I talk with someone in Korean and we drink something at a cafe, I would pay for their drink. The same if someone invites me to do a video with them, they would pay for me. Like they buy, they would buy me lunch or buy me dinner or a drink, and it's just normal. So that's where that. Can add up if I make four videos a month and I'm spending ten, twenty bucks per video. That's easily a hundred dollars right there.、Um, if an SD card breaks and I buy a new SD card, that's forty dollars. Or you know, oh, I need this lens. This lens is five hundred dollars. You know, so it adds up. But yeah, currently I'm making about three hundred dollars a month. But it, you know, it is what it is. I don't, I don't mind. I would still keep doing my YouTube channel if I made nothing. Every month, as long as I had viewers, as long as my viewership is still increasing, I would still keep making videos for free. So, but I decided that when I first started, anyway. Have you ever met an older person, and did they pay, or the other time around? Yeah, I think older people in Korean,、um, because they treat you like, if you treat them kind of like your hyung, like your older brother, if you're close with them, they kind of feel like obligated. In Korea, the culture is much stronger, where someone who is your friend. We would say friend, but in Korean they wouldn't say chingu. They would say he is your hyung or you know oppa, like something like that. And typically, the older friend in a relationship feels obligated to treat the younger person. That's just the thing in Korea. We don't really have that in the U.S. If, you, if I meet someone who's older than me, I have some friends who are older than me. If I meet them, I don't feel like they are obligated to pay for me. And I don't feel obligated to pay for them. We just split it. We're just friends. But in Korea, the older person will feel like, "Oh, I'm older. I'm the I'm the young, or I'm the old guy. I should pay," like that. So typically, if I meet older friends in Korea, it depends. But they typically feel like they want to pay. They want to treat. They're like, "Ah, yeah, 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 they got it, yeah, yeah, like that." Or put your money away. You know, I got it. Which is better, Hanguk drama or Yeneng? Yeneng for practicing Korean. Yeneng a million times better. How many languages can you speak? I can speak well. I can speak Korean and English well,、um, and then I know a few others. Like I can, I can do conversational Japanese,、uh, really basic French, five years of French, but really basic, and then extremely basic. I can kind of read a little bit Mandarin and Cantonese. I studied those for a while too. But what time is it over there? Here it's、uh, like almost four p.m. Is it possible to learn Korean without a book? Sure. If you live in Korea and you have lots of exposure, yeah. Question. It's about to start taking class. Any tips for studying? And can K dramas help you? Korean dramas more than Korean dramas. You can do、uh, Korean variety shows. Those would help you. What Yenin can I watch now on YouTube? I'm not sure what what programs they have on YouTube. I know that. What is it? Drama Fever or Viki or those websites. If you search for a drama, you can find free places to stream them on the internet. Did you specific drills or just through just through conversation? I did just conversation, and sometimes I would practice a word that I'm using, like a word that I'm learning. I would try to work that word into the conversation, but I didn't do drills with friends. I need to die, man. So don't then go in there. Do Koreans expect you to know Korean? No. They don't. Hello, counselor. Does Korean food taste good? Yes. Try it yourself. Try it yourself and see. Is that why you moved to Korea? I'm not. I'm not in Korea. I'm not in Korea. I live in. I'm in Los Angeles. That's where I live. I'm in Korea one fourth of each year. So three months of every year, I'm in Korea. But I don't live there. I couldn't. I wouldn't want to be there during this time of year in summer. The best. This is the worst time to visit Korea.、Um, I would say July and August are the worst time. In September, July, August, and September are the worst time to visit Korea because of how hot it is. Can we find the Go Billy book free online? Unfortunately, yes. Some people have pirated the book and uploaded it for free,、um, but it's not normally free. <laughs> I've tried to remove a few, but you know you can't really stop piracy anyway. Sorry for spamming the same question. Sorry if I didn't see your question. Feel free to spam it again. I won't be mad. But it kind of means a lot. I just finished your first book. How do you recommend practicing listening with the audio files? I would practice listening while reading. Really, listening while reading first. 
a couple times until you're able to follow along with what they're saying and what you're reading. And then after that, practice a few times. Oh, my hair keeps getting in my eye. I have to get a haircut. I'll do that on Monday. And the next thing to do would be to practice listening without reading. But first, I would say read along while listening because you have to adjust your ear to the sounds that are on the page, and that takes a while to do. Like, I'm not an advocate against or for piracy. I think that in some cases, it's definitely useful. I think in some cases, it's even good. But I think that in some cases, it can also hurt. Like in, in my case, I'm not sure if it really hurts or not. I can't know, but I also don't know if it helps um, just because I'm such a small um, creator. So I'm not like a big company where maybe piracy can help a lot. Like if you know you pirate someone's album and it's so good and you love it, you buy it, you tell your friends, you know, that could work. That could be good for piracy. On the other hand, you know, there's a small audience of people that might buy something and they pirate it and no one buys it. So it just depends on how big is the Korean market. Sent. I have no way of knowing that. Someone said, are Koreans friendly to foreigners? Yes, they are. I have really bad allergies. Um, yes, you can go to Korea. If you're really worried about the fine dust, dust, you can buy an N95 mask. That's N95. You can buy them online for $1 each, or you can buy them in Korea for like $4, $5 each. And uh, they filter out all of that, but it's hard to breathe, I think. Like it feels like your, your mouth just gets sweaty. Um, I had, I should say I had, I had a, because I had a surgery to fix my uh, inside of my nose, not outside, not, not plastic surgery, just inside of my nose, I had surgery. So I don't have allergies anymore, but I did. I had really bad allergies and I would just take allergy medicine in Korea and in the United States. Tom, it seems like you lost some weight. Yes. Hey, thanks for noticing. I lost uh, nine kilograms between now and January. I should say between a couple months ago and January. Uh, on purpose, not on accident. I purposely wanted to fit into my t-shirts again because I was starting, mine are small, and I, my shoulders started to get a little big just from, you know, stress of having a kid, stress of working a lot, um, editing all day. You know, I just slowly started gaining weight and eating too much. But so I decided, okay, no, I'm going to lose it. So I lost it back. So you're planning to get some abs? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm against exercising. I'm too lazy. <laughs> Um, I want to buy a Dance Dance Revolution machine, you know, DDR game. I want to buy one of those machines. And that's what I would practice. That's what I would do for exercise. But I'm never, I'm never going to do that. They're, they're too expensive. I know you don't really recommend song lyrics for learning Korean. I was wondering if your thoughts, if your lyrics are for reading, pronunciation skills. Um, for reading, sure. Just for reading and pronunciation. Ah, pronunciation, no. For reading, yes. For pronunciation, no. Are you teaching your kid? Yes, Korean, yes. I'm going to be making a video about that as well. I'll make a proper, like a full video about teaching Korean to a kid and about how to do it and how it works. And yeah, so I'll do that later. Yes, he speaks Korean natively. His, his main language he uses is Korean, although he seems to like English better because he's living in America. And I'll also talk about that, how that works. BTS doesn't pronounce their words. It, that's typical, I think, of uh, many Korean artists that they're not going to pronounce things accurately because they want the song to sound good. Pros and cons of living in Korea. Um, I made a video about that, but not on my main, main channel. I made a video on a separate, separate channel one time. I'll have to find it. But basically, the, ma the major points are pros are insurance, transportation, and the cons are weather, and the school system and pollution. That's the quick summary there. <laughs> Topic. I'm going to raise my kids speaking three languages. Uh, that's going to be hard to do. Kids don't want to pick up that many languages typically. Uh, they want to do, they could do like two, three, but when you start to get four, it's going to be just a few phrases. They're not going to be really speaking that language anymore. Um, kids are very smart though, and if they grow up, speaking multiple languages, they can do it. But as a little kid, if you're just trying to teach those, they, it, won't, it won't stick. It has to be something that they're actually growing up actively using all of those languages. And it would be really hard to get that many languages actively into a kid's life. And maybe, you know, maybe a teenager, if they live on a border between, you know, in Europe somewhere, they could do, you know, several languages because they're frequently using all of those. 
But outside of that situation, it would be too hard to get the amount of exposure required for someone to learn more than a couple languages as a kid. Italian English first due to heritage. Okay, that'll be good. You meet any K-pop idols or K-drama actor actresses? I've seen some. I've never met them. I've seen some before. Like, oh, I think that's that person. Okay. I've never actually met them. I, I saw Psy. I went to a Psy concert the, a few months before he released Gangnam Style. So he was already famous, but he wasn't crazy famous yet. He hadn't been famous in the U.S. yet. And I met I well, not met, met him. I saw him. I was really close to him. He almost spit on me because he, like, drank water and <sighs> spit it all over the crowd. And I was really close to getting spit on. But um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> lucky. And yeah, now you would say lucky. At that time, it was just funny. It's like, oh, have to go. So nice to be. Oh, yeah, thanks. Take care. I'm only streaming just today for one hour. Oh, I also wanted your guys' opinion on something. So I want to show you something that I'm, that I'm also going to do. These are actually already for sale, but I'm, I'm not advertising them yet. Teespring, okay. YouTube added in the option for us to sell stuff through our YouTube page. Now, what that is, it's, it's not my book. It's not something I would normally want to sell, but YouTube lets us sell products like t-shirts, pillows, cups, stickers, you know, that type of stuff. Speci just a few specific types of items we can customize and sell. Draw the soap in. <laughs> You explain the Korean school system? Yeah, actually, I made a video about that. Uh, Korean school system. I'm editing it right now. Yeah, so we can sell merchandise now. So I'm thinking of some fun merchandise. It's the thing is the thing is with merchandise is it's mostly just a fun thing. It's not so I can make money very much because I, I know maybe some of you might be interested in this behind the scenes process of YouTube, but you when merchandise is sold through YouTube. The creator, so in this case me, we get like one or two dollars per item. So you might pay six dollars for stickers, for example. The stickers would be six dollars. Um, this other company would print them, ship them, and handle customer service. And then I would get paid two dollars from which taxes get deducted. So, you know, about every, everything's done about a dollar, right? So one or two dollars from that. Or you buy a pillow for $26, okay, you know, regular $26 pillow. I would get, you know, six or seven dollars from that after everything's done. But that's normal because it's not me making these things. It's another company printing them, sending them out and taking care of everything. So, you know, I can't really complain. But I still, still, I think it would be fun to have some shirts or stuff like that. The benefit though is I don't have to deal with the shipping. I don't have to purchase 1,000 shirts ship them to my house and store them in my closet and mail them out when people order. So that's the benefit. And I wouldn't be able to do that anyway. So it's kind of like, eh, you know, it's a what, catch 22, as I say. I don't even know if I'm using that word right. So I have a couple. Let me, let me try to show you this. So I have two ideas I made so far. I'm, I'm going to do some more later. I have a pillow, which I, I really like the pillow. I, I want to buy the pillow, actually. So this, this is what I designed the other day. Okay, so there's a pillow, and on the front is Key Cat, like they're like ca cartoon Key Cat. On the back is just Billy. I don't know, I would totally buy it. You could change it like pink or blue or orange or whatever like that. Anyway, okay, so I think from this I would get like eight bucks or something. Um, and then this was using art that I already had, because right now I don't, I don't want to commission new artwork. Uh, and then some stickers, so like they have this sheet of stickers, which would be $6 or something, and I think from that I would get like two bucks or something. So anyway, that's the boring uh, business side of how it works. I'm just letting you guys know. <laughs> this, this is not so much to make money for me. This is just kind of like, I want some stickers. I want a pillow. <laughs> I wish I could do more though. I wish I could do like a, a Key Cat doll or a Billy doll or something like that. And you know, maybe in the future I could. But so that's what I have so far. That's on Teespring, but I haven't advertised this yet because well, you know, I don't know. I want to have a few more designs before I put this. But the benefit is this would appear on my YouTube videos at the bottom of the YouTube videos. So you so it would be easy for someone to see them. But right now, I mean, you could get you could buy them if you go to like teespring.com/stores/ 
Go Billy Korean. If you want to search for it, you can find these two things, Go, the Go Billy Korean Teespring store. But I haven't advertised them yet and I haven't posted them yet because I want to make a few more things. I want to make a t-shirt also. Uh, I think it'd be cool to have a t-shirt and some stuff like that. Yeah, they don't have a hat option though. I was really surprised. Like if I go to products, let's see if I go to start designing. Let's design a product. Let's see what products I can make. They have cups. They have socks, beach towel, iPhone case, leggings, Go Billy leggings. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, stickers, apparel. Yeah, they don't have any any hats or anything, unfortunately. So yeah, I can make them in the future, but for right now, this is. I'll try this for right now and see how it goes. And if people really like them, you know, I can. I'll do some other stuff. But so that's the other thing I'm doing. I got some good ideas from this video. Picture of Go Billy on your leggings. Yeah, I know. That's like the last thing I would want on my leggings would be my face. <laughs> yeah, I think they ship everywhere. It, that's the, the nice thing is another company handles the printing and the shipping and, you know, any refunds or exchanges or anything like that. Sell your classic shirt. I wish. That's what I would do. If I can pick anything to make as merchandise, I would make my Billy shirt a little differently. I would like, you know, make it a t-shirt that looks like the Billy shirt with the simple Billy hat and a key cat doll that could go in the pocket. You know, I would do that. I would do something cute like that, but. <laughs> a vid to help distinguish Korean words. What do you mean, windshield laughter? What do you mean? Is Korean have you been to? I've been in Japan and Hong Kong and Alaska. Wait, not Alaska. Alaska is United States. I meant to say Canada. I said Alaska before too, but I, I've been to Alaska also, but I meant to say um, I've been to Canada before because that's a different country. Alaska is not a different country. <laughs> What cartoons? Um, there's one called Daniel the Tiger that he loves. That's that's it, Daniel the Tiger. Just pretty much like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood for, that's a cartoon. Was it difficult to distinguish between different words when you started learning? Um, just different, difficult to understand what people were saying, sure. But that just took practice. The, tip, the only tip I would give for that would be more listening practice and speaking practice. But there's not really a tip for how to get because that's just part of learning Korean. That's just part of the whole process of learning Korean is getting better at recognizing words. And the more Korean you know, the easier you can recognize what the word should be. Even if they say it wrong, you can understand what their word was supposed to be. So, like when you're first learning, much love, involving grain things. Um, so, like if someone says, Yeah, I was going to the today. Then in Korean, you can understand like, oh, I think he said park because he was talking about that earlier. You know, you can fill in the blanks when you know more Korean or you hear it, you hear the P sound at the beginning and you hear pr. So you know it's, you know what word it is and it's the same in Korean. And that's just part of the whole learning Korean process. As you get better at learning Korean, you'll be able to know what the word should be before they even say it. So when you're talking with someone in Korean, they might say like, oh, so guess who I saw at the store yesterday? Then you, you know, like, oh, it's that person they were talking about before, you know, in English, because you know they were talking about that person before. It's the same thing in Korean. You can expect what someone's going to say before they even say it, because you were, you understood what else, you understood what they're talking about. And you can, under, you can hear the tone of their voice. Whereas in the beginning, you can't know what their tone is. You don't know if they're angry or upset, but now you can see, ah, na, oze ku saram batta? You totally can hear yesterday, oh, I saw that guy. And you know it's a bad thing. And you know that it's going to be the person they talked about before at that location. So, you know, just the more Korean you learn, the better you can understand what they're saying. That doesn't really make, I mean, that's obvious. But basically, don't worry about trying to understand vocabulary better. That's not really a separate skill that you can develop. In Korean, is it park or pak? It's, it's pronounced as pak, P-A-K, pak. Not P-A-K, but you know, that's that sound, just Pak. English, though, wrote it as Park because they wanted the name to sound more like an English name. So that's why they chose Lee, which was an English last name. When I say English, I mean, you know, just English language. Uh, park as well. Um, yeah. I'm 13. Is a good age to start learning Korean? 13 might be a bit young for studying with a book, but you can definitely start learning Korean through exposure. So watching lots of TV shows, listening to lots of Korean,
making Korean friends and trying to talk with them, trying to use basic Korean. But I wouldn't stress focusing on grammar or vocabulary. 13 is still a bit too young to learn those types of things well. You'll learn those things better when you get older as your brain, you know, solidifies with your native language. But before that's happened, you know, you're still at the age when you can learn like, an, like a child. You can still kind of learn without studying with lots of exposure. <laughs> Korean, Koreans are worse spellers of Korean than English speakers of English are. Um, I, I'm not sure about that. I think it's probably similar. Is it cold in Korea? No, it's very hot right now. Extremely hot and humid. Let's see. So, oh, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys. I'm going to be starting in an additional live stream in addition to this one. I'm not sure when I'll do it, but... So far, all of my live streams have just been like this. I've done four live streams or five live streams. I've just been talking with you guys or, inter or interacting with you guys and doing something, showing you what I'm doing, asking your feedback. But I'm going to be doing a live stream where I'm actually teaching some Korean to you guys. So I would like your suggestions on what kinds of things would you like to learn? And let me write these. I'm going to write some of these down. So I'm curious what types of things you guys would like to learn in a live stream. And by that, I mean a live stream would be beneficial because you would get instant feedback. So I'm wondering what type of stuff would you like to learn in a live stream? And I'll try to do that. Hearing a statement, okay, hearing something and responding. Uh, I'm going to, I'll be up front. I probably would do more beginner level stuff instead of intermediate or advanced. Specifically because, although I know there already is a lot of beginner level stuff out there, because most people are still somewhere in the beginner level. So I want to make sure most people can still be able to enjoy the lessons. So I'm going to keep it more at a beginner level. That doesn't mean I won't do intermediate stuff, but the general premise of things that I teach will be aimed at someone who's still at the beginner level. So if we have, if I do a topic that's about something in, in intermediate level, let's say, if I do an intermediate topic, it will be presented in a way, in a simpler way, that way beginners might be able to get something out of it as well. So I also want to do intermediate stuff, but it's all going to be geared toward beginners. So I'm trying to think about some stuff that I can teach you guys live here with feedback that would be useful that you could learn Korean with that you wouldn't be able to get just from my videos. So yes, feedback lessons is what I want to do, not just talking and teaching you. So hearing a statement or responding, so like uh, giving you guys a question in Korean or saying something in Korean, and then you could pick what's the right answer or what should be something that you could say to that. Maybe that's something like um, saying a set question, asking them how they respond then I respond to those answers and give feedback and corrections. Okay, that could work. So like, how about something like asking you guys questions and um, asking you how you might respond to those questions and then I can look at what you guys are saying and give you some feedback based on that. I might try doing that as well. Um, let's see. But yeah, basically stuff that would give feedback for you guys. Uh, so if you have any ideas, feel free to let me know. If not, I'll think of some things and I'd like to start that after a couple weeks, I'm thinking. After a few weeks, I'd like to start doing that. Do, do, do. Then, let's see, what else? Yeah, so I pretty much said everything I wanted to, to say for this live stream. Is there any, do you guys have any other questions? You're feel, feel, feel free to ask any uh, Korean questions if you have any, and I'd be happy to answer those as well. Let's see. Short sentences. Oh, <laughs> I'm dumb. I had my phone scrolled up and I thought nobody was saying anything for the last couple minutes. So I guess I touched my phone. I didn't realize I have a few other suggestions here. Okay, here you say responding. Verbs, short sentences. Okay, audio for correction. Daily life phrases, particles. Particles, particles. Analyzing sentences. Okay. Oh, analyzing sentences. That's a good, good example too. Let me write that down. See, I need to learn how to work a phone before I... <laughs> okay, teaching vocab, vocab related to...
How about travel, making friends, pronunciation, fabulous pronunciation difference, general conversation. Hope this book's heavy. Okay. This guy video called Twin Limmar, mock situation, towards red particle, nice corner. Japanese. Sorry, I see. Oh, I see there were a lot of things people were saying. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do I know Spanish? I don't know much Spanish. Okay. So, oh no, I still need to scroll. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I have, I have fast typing. Actually, that's one of my skills. Um, I'm got, I've got a, uh, my record is over, I want to say 150 accurate words a minute. So it's pretty fast. And that's, that was my skill before I learned Korean was typing. Cause my mom used to do, my mom used to have a typing business. So she got really fast at typing and that made me interested in trying to get, see how fast I could get. Though normally I'm not that fast. Normally I'm about just like a hundred or so. General conversations, English and Spanish thing. Spanish sentences, similar to Korean. Uh, it's, it would just be a coincidence, but yeah, I don't speak Spanish. I know a few words just being in, in here in California. How many books do you have? I have, ow, I have three books, right? It's Korean made simple one, two, and three. Don't have much to say except thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Eighth grade, my mom speaks Spanish and English. I keep getting mixed up. It's hard to learn two languages at once. So my only feedback would be if you really need to learn two languages at once, then separate the times that you study them. So maybe say every in the mornings, I'm going to study this language. In the evenings, I'm only going to study this language and trying to keep them as separate as possible. And even different days, like this day, I'm going to study. I'm only going to do this. This day, I'm only going to be doing this. Did you end up beating your mom in word per minute? <laughs> I only read the first. Did you end up beating your mom? I'm like, oh, oh, in word per minute. Yes, I did. But she's still really fast. And she's done it for longer than me. And she did it as a business. And she has nails. She has long, you know, nice nails. So who knows if she didn't have her nails anymore. And, and she typed on a typewriter too. So she could be faster than me if she didn't have her long nails. And if we were on a typewriter, she'd probably beat me. But on a keyboard, I can, I can go faster than her. Do they use it generally only to people of the same age? Not sure what you're, what you're asking. I missed, I missed what you asked, sorry. Non-Korean speaking jobs in Korea. I'd like to make a video about that as well. I haven't yet, but I will. But there's a lot of different types of jobs you can do. Some government jobs are open. You can work at startups. A lot of startups hire people who speak English natively who, and also who know some Korean. That's really common. Programmers as well, if you're really good at programming, you can get any job in Korea that you can get in the US if you're highly skilled. So if you have a skill, some talent that you're very good at and you can speak Korean, then you can get any, almost any job that you would normally get in the US, you can also get it in Korea. But if you don't have a specific skill and you haven't graduated college and it's gonna, it's gonna be hard to get anything outside of being a English teacher at a small academy, a small school. The cap says, 착한 남자. How do I improve with 존댓 말? That's one of the reasons that my books start with 존댓 말. They start with polite Korean in the beginning because it's easier to learn 반말. It's easier to learn slang from polite Korean than it is to go from slang to polite Korean. It's harder to move up than it is to go from super polite down. It's easy to go from super polite Korean down to basic casual Korean, but it's really hard to go back up the other way because you're not used to when you're not used to all of those situations when you're supposed to use it. Whereas starting at the top of the being high polite, the completely polite, it's easier to see when you're allowed to speak casually instead of the other way around. Um, the only thing I would recommend would be practicing using it more, maybe going back and studying polite Korean from the beginning. Say, I'm at chapter four, I noticed a lot of vocabulary. You can learn it, but I wouldn't stress about it. So if you're not familiar with it, scan it, kind of read over it, but don't stress about it. And when you see that word appear again, then you can go back and look it up again and say, oh, what was that word? Oh, I see, I learned that five chapters ago. Okay, that's fine to do. Don't worry about that. The, all of the vocabulary in the first three books are, is so commonly used in Korea, I really picked the most common of the most common words in those books. So you will know it all, you'll learn it all, but you don't have to stress about knowing it all because of how common it is. 
that just exposing yourself to a lot of Korean, you're going to experience, you're going to get those words. You're going to pick them up by just speaking Korean and just using the vocabulary, just, I mean, not vocabulary, just using the grammar that's in the book, you're going to naturally end up hearing and using all of that vocabulary anyway and more. So I wouldn't stress about the vocabulary in the book. Just be aware of it, like read it. So you've seen it before. So in the future, when you see it again, you can think, oh, I think I heard that word before. Oh, it means that. Okay, that's right. Like that. And it'll, it'll kind of click. Lots of love from South Africa. Awesome. Cool. South Africa. Never been there either. <laughs> All right. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, I'll start doing some live streams. And I'm not sure how I'll do the live streams because if I do the live stream with 100 people, it might be too crowded, so we'll we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Harabuji and Harmony been rude to you in Korea? Sure, sure, sometimes. You, usually, though, no. But, you know, people are people. Some people are nice. Some people are mean. In general, though, I think Koreans are very polite, very nice. Do you think it's possible to learn Korean by yourself? Yes, sure. I learned Korean by myself. I mean, I had people I could ask. I could ask Koreans. Or I could ask other people who learned Korean, like, is this correct? Or what does this mean? But yeah, I learned by myself too. So you can definitely do it. I lived in Korea though. I studied while I lived in Korea. <clears throat> Thank you for helping me learn. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. What can I say except you're welcome? It's a useful watch English drama with Korean subtitle. Um, if you're going to watch American dramas or English dramas anyway, then sure. But it's not going to be much compared to at least just watching a Korean drama, which isn't even very much compared to watching or doing other things. Your everything video is effort. All right. Oh, love from Algeria. Cool. Hey. Korean only live stream. I do a lot of Korean only live streams for a Korean audience, um, but not on this YouTube channel. I have a different channel where I just, for a hobby, I speak in Korean and I teach English to Korean people just for fun, but I don't do that here. Most of my audience here is not Koreans, so. What are some tips on learning lessons on your books? Should I take my time or go along and do a lesson? Take your time. Definitely take your time. No need to rush. You don't have to go at a snail's pace, but I would rather that you don't just say, oh, I'm going to do a chapter a day because some chapters are really short and some chapters are really long. I would just say, pace yourself and just be comfy, do a slow pace and just tell yourself, I'm in the book. I'm doing something. I'm doing a great job. And you don't have to feel like, oh, I didn't do a full chapter today or I did a chapter today. That's great. Like, don't think about it that way. Just think I studied Korean today. I was using the book for this much time and I learned this today. Like, think about what you are learning, how many things you're learning, how can you use what you're learning, and not just how many pages in a book you went through or how many minutes you studied. Because that's not a very accurate metric, I think. English Billy went Billy. Yeah, there's another side to me, yes. But I don't advertise, like, I'd say that's a hobby of mine that's not related to this. I, I do have other hobbies outside of teaching Korean. You know, sometimes I play a couple computer games, uh, I really like Dance Revolution, you know, I really like cooking, I cook all the time, but I don't really show that stuff on the channel very much, it's just unrelated, I guess. Thanks for putting so much effort into it, uh, all your videos, oh, you're welcome, thank you. To you, I type like a grandma. <laughs> oh no. She would top sign, she was like, thanks, sure, jo sure, Jose. Compared to you, I type like a grandma, yeah. English is not my first language, Spanish is my first language, be hard to feed. Um, no, you can get a job in a special, if you have a special skill, then you can get a different type of job. Where can we find the Korean stream? That's a secret. If you locate it, then you get to watch it. But I'm not going to advertise it here because it's not related to this channel. And I do it only in Korean. So it's not really for an audience of people who are learning Korean. It's for an audience of people who are learning English. There are English academies in Korea. Yes, lots of English academies in Korea. So many English academies in Korea. A cooking with Billy. I did one. I did a live stream a few weeks ago where I cooked, I guess you could call it cooking. 
I made a nasty ramen sandwich with spam and jelly, and uh, it tastes great. And I made that a few weeks ago. And today I'm going to do more cooking. I'm going to make pasta. I'm going to roll some pasta noodles today. And next week I'll make steak, pasta, mashed potatoes, and salad, and a couple other things. When my friend comes, I'll do like this big meal. So I really like cooking. I cook all the time. But I don't make videos about cooking on my channel because I'm not very good at cooking most things. I'm only good at cooking a few things. Have you ever met Hyunwoo from Tag? Yes, I met Hyunwoo several times. He's awesome. He's, I want to say he's my, f I shouldn't say favorite. I shouldn't say favorite because then that's mean to other people. But he's totally my favorite. <laughs> I really like the guy. He's really, he's a really hard worker, I'll say. The Korean channel is I love this channel a lot. We already found it. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, yeah, just uh, feed me that sandwich was a monstrosity, but that list was incredibly. <laughs> yeah, the sandwich was really good. I really, I really like that sandwich, but I don't make it very often because of how big it is. Clearly, you first time watching. Oh, cool. Hey. Yeah, sorry. If you say something and I didn't reply, feel free to say it again. It just means I didn't see it. I try to reply to everything that I see. When Koreans ask for my age, they're asking your, if they ask you in Korean, if they're speaking Korean, they want your Korean age. If they ask you in English, they want your international real age, not your fake Korean age. <laughs> but yeah, if they ask you in Korean, they want your Korean age. I'm in Philippines. Ah, they have a uh, free shipping to the Philippines on bookdepository.com. They have free shipping internationally. That's the cheapest place, I think, for outside of, if, if Amazon doesn't ship there, then bookdepository.com does. Do you think you'll ever collaborate with Talk To Me In Korean? Yes, I've done a couple, I did a few collaborations. I did two videos on my channel. I did several vid videos for their channel. I did that whole 50 episode series for Talk To Me In Korean. The one about the 50 common Korean mistakes. This time in Korea, um, we met up and we planned out a bunch of videos and then I filmed for them 50 videos. So they edited that and added in some stuff and put it on their website. And it's this big 50 episode series, this giant series for the most common 50, 50 most common Korean mistakes. And that's on Talk To Me In Korean's website right now. And I really like that. That was a lot of fun to, uh, to make that with them. They're really, really nice to work with. Yeah, fake age. How much would you charge for private tutoring? I don't do private tutoring because I wouldn't want to charge a lot. I'd rather charge less. But if I charged less, then I wouldn't be able to do it because I'm busy with making videos and books and stuff like that. So I don't have any option right now. Like I said, it would have to be too high to make it. I wouldn't feel good about charging $50 an hour for someone to do Korean tutoring with me. So, so none right now. <laughs> If you need art for your channels or merchandise, ask my brother. Oh yeah, send me a, um, email me. Email me his portfolio. My email is just billy at gobillykorean.com. Email me his portfolio. I'm always looking for artists. I would totally pay $50 an hour. Maybe you would, but I wouldn't want to advertise that, I guess is what I'm saying. I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel good charging that much for Korean tutoring when I'd rather charge per I'd rather charge like 10 bucks an hour, but if I did that, I wouldn't be able to do my other stuff. So what is a good age to start learning with a book? I would say 15. I would say 15 is the earliest that I would really recommend starting with a book. 14, if you're like really good with uh, English grammar and you're really good with writing and reading, then 14 maybe. Otherwise, it's 15, 16. At that age, you can really benefit from studying from books. Glad I can have all your suggestions on learning your content. Oh, thanks, MMME. Do you have any basic grammar videos? Yes, I have a series of 100 and 101 basic grammar videos, and I'm making some more. Hold on, let me see. Any tips for people learning specifically Japanese and Korean? I will make a video about learning two languages at once, but I don't have any videos yet. But basically, the tip is separate them. So separate days, separate times, as much as possible, separate them because you'll, they'll get mixed up. So have different friends who you only speak Japanese, only friend, friends you only speak Korean with, and do both of them as much as possible. So it's hard to do more than one language at once. So if you really need to, then separate them. Bought your book three without buying your previous two? Yes. 
Um, if you if you can follow book three, that's great. But book three requires the grammar and vocabulary from book one and two. So if you're okay using a dictionary frequently and looking up other grammar on the internet, and if you're already at that level, you can probably get by with just book three. What's your opinion on the Koreatown Little Bangladesh? I haven't heard of that. I'm army now, but it's, but <laughs> it's Billy Love. Thank you for your answer. Welcome. I know, just wondering. Let's see. When did you, how long did it take you to understand the topic and subject markers? That just took, uh, I want to say like a year. Like, even though I understood how they were supposed to be used and what they meant, it really took me a long time until I felt comfortable using them the correct way. Because there are many times when you can use both. And it's right. It just has a different feeling. So there is really no right and wrong most of the time with those subject and topic markers. There are some cases when it's right and wrong, but most of the time it's not. It, both of them are usually okay. So I would say don't, don't worry if you get stressed about them. They will make sense. Just be aware. Focus on the actual meanings of them. And then later when you learn more Korean and you get exposed to more Korean, then those meanings will click and you'll suddenly be like, ah, now I see why it, it means that. Now I see why it means that. Because they really require not just understanding what they mean, but actually getting the feeling of them. And that feeling is really just what they mean. But to be able to use it quickly in conversation, it'll take a lot of practice is what I'm trying to say. What level can I expect to be after finishing book three? You'd be immediate, low intermediate to mid intermediate or high intermediate. Depends how much you study. If you practice the books and you knew everything in the books really well, you would be mid to high intermediate. If you just go through the books, like blah, 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 going through the books, low intermediate, I would say. But you have to make that sound too when you go through the books, the blah, 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 when you're reading it. Then you'll get to low intermediate. If you don't make that sound, mid maybe mid -inter intermediate would be more accurate. The email is, ju it's, it's just from, I think it's on my YouTube page as well, but it's just Billy, me, Billy, at gobillycorean.com. Referring to Mugu Impunity for Korean live stream, newest videos five minutes old. I, I don't, yeah, I don't do live streams on that YouTube though. But yeah, that's, that's, that's right, you found it fast. Did you hit a plateau? Yes. I made a video about that yesterday, the plateau, evolving brain. I, I filmed a video yesterday with Motivate Korean and SpongeMind, and we talked about the intermediate plateau. And I'm, I just started editing it, so I'll upload that after, after a few months. I'll upload it. So just wait, because there's lots of stuff we talked about. I keep adding words to make other words. I think I made up. <laughs> you can't do that. Um, I would say that's you're doing that because you don't have a foundation yet for the basic basics, the basic of basics. You you know the alphabet and you know this grammar and this grammar, but you need to have the very basic foundation below that. And so I would go back and relearn those basic things and then go back to your current level in order to keep going because that'll just it's going to pile up and you're going to make really weird sentences unless you get the basics of the basics thanks for a city where there aren't many koreans to practice oh really yeah for that you only have the option of practicing online with pen pals online caught this live any recommendations on getting started 10 phrases and 20 words i have a video called how to start learning korean in 10 steps tutorial free video go billy korean there's a there's a video on my channel how to start learning korean and that answers the process for how to go through learning korean and it gives lots of free resources that you can use tells you what you should do in what order and yeah that's a comprehensive video you can use to get started is there another spot with korean live streams no that's the secret i told you but maybe i'll, I'll share it with you later then how's your family doing my family's doing good Except, um, what is it? My grandfather died last week, but other than that, the family's doing great. <laughs> I guess he, he was really old though anyway, so. I mean, it wasn't a shock is what I'm trying to say. Of course, everyone's sad, but it wasn't shocking. Where do we get pen pals? The app Tandem, 
the app HelloTalk, the website Conversation Exchange, the website InnerPals, or just Google Korean Pen Pals. You'll find lots of websites. They're all the same. Just use any of them. My condolences. Oh, yeah, thanks. There are lots of sound changes, sound change rules. Hello talking. They're all like dating, to be honest. They're all like dating. All of the apps and websites for pen pals are really like dating websites and dating apps. But know that while you use them and it'll be okay. Just, you know, if you know that, if you expect that, it'll be okay. She never corrects me. She only compliments me after I have a sentence, even when I know it's wrong. You just ask her. Ask her to correct you. If she says no, then find someone else. You know, everyone's different. Some people will be fine with correcting your stuff and some people won't want to correct your stuff. Some people are just surprised that you can even type, that you even installed a Korean keyboard. My parents are nervous about me getting a pen pal. It depends how old you are. If you're really young, then they might be nervous about that. Um, if you're older, like you're an adult or you know, 16, 17, 18, then you should be okay. You just don't have to meet them. You don't have to send them photos. And you can try to meet people who are the same gender as you if you're really worried about that. Yeah, I'd say try to meet people who are the same gender as you. you then you don't have to worry so much about it. Is there anyone in your family and friends group that speaks Korean besides your wife? Uh, yeah, of course, tons of friends who speak only Korean, which I'm very happy about. And I really like my Korean friends as much as my Korean friends who speak English. I just like having lots of friends. Can you make a video about universities or housing? I did. I made a video about universities and high school, which I'm uploading. Uh, I'm editing now, and I'll upload it later. Uh, I don't have a video about houses with the Pyong system, but I could do a short video about that. That's what I want to do is, I said, I want to do two videos a week, and the, se the extra video each week will be a short video, kind of like what Talk To Me In Korean does, but not, not the same style, but just that Talk To Me In Korean has a, has a series where they answer short questions. And that's kind of what I'm going to do, the different style, different types of questions. But I do want to answer a bunch of little questions like that, that people have had. And that there aren't videos about these topics already. How do you make friends in Korea? Online. I made almost, I don't want to say all, but most of my Korean friends I made online from apps or websites. How good are your dancing skills? <laughs> uh, not good. My little brother's pretty good at dancing. Maybe I'll, I'll show him in a video. Maybe I'll make a video with my little brother sometime. He's really good at dancing, but I don't dance. I can do like the, like, you know, the guy at the back, in the back of the club, pretending he's cool, kind of dance, you know, like, you know, like this kind of dance, like the music's going on and you like kind of pretend that you can dance just so people don't stare at you for standing still. That's, that's pretty much the extent of my dancing. Do you think you'd be offended if someone's younger than you spoke to you informally? If they're Korean, then it would be offensive because it means that they're trying to insult you or that they don't care about you. If it's a little kid, then no, because they don't know. If it's someone who's learning Korean, then no. I would just, I would let them know like, hey, I don't mind because I'm not a Korean, but be careful if you speak like this to older people because Koreans would be mad. And a Korean person would be upset too if they heard it, just because it kind of means that you're insulting them if you speak the wrong politeness level to them. Anyway, so starting after a few weeks, maybe two or three weeks later, I'm going to be doing some live streams here where I teach you guys Korean, different topics. I'll, I'll pick something. So I'll do a lesson about different things and it'll be interactive lesson. So maybe I'll pick a topic I've already made a video on, but it'll be a fully interactive lesson with you guys, let you guys practice it. And I'll do that after a few weeks. So just letting you guys know I'm working on that as well. So. Thanks for watching. I'm going to stop it here because I don't, I need to do, I have to finish editing a gigantic video about Korean tattoos before the end of, well, within three days. So I got to finish that. I got to finish a full draft of the video tonight. I got to finish the video in a couple days and upload it. So that'll be the next week's new video. And thanks guys for coming up. Thanks for the, uh, let's see, who, who gave that? I need to see, uh, someone gave uh, the donation. I can't say their name, but they had uh, the Spanish sounding name. I can't remember. It doesn't let me see. I'm clicking on it. It doesn't show me. Anyway, thanks for the person who gave the donation. Thanks for coming, everyone. And I will see you guys again next time. Krum.
Tamitoba. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Take care. Study your Korean. Oh, wait. Evolving brain. Okay, I got to say thanks because I just got a donation at the last second. I was just about to click. I was clicking on the X and it says, are you sure? And I was going to click OK and then your donation popped right up. Thanks, man. <laughs> thanks, Evolving Brain. And um, guys, take care. See you guys again later. <laughs> Bye, guys.